KD all day. Now let's test our knowledge of our exponent rule. So these next few questions are really just a litmus test to see if you know the bare minimum that you need to know about exponents for the GMAT. So this first question is a data sufficiency question that says, is X greater than zero? So just from the prompt, I am sort of being tipped off here that this question is not going to be really about, it's not really an exponent question in the sense with, we're not going to be expected to solve for an exponent or the power uh, of any exponent. This is really more of a number of properties question because if it's asking me is X greater than zero, it's really testing my understanding of positivity and negativity and how that relates to exponents, whether your exponent is even or whether your exponent is odd. And so our first statement says X cubed is less than negative 27. And so here we have an odd power, which means our, the overall value for our exponent is going to retain the sign of our base. So if X cubed is less than negative 27, that means X must also be negative or less than zero. And in this case, so three cubed is equal to positive 27. And so negative three cubed would be equal to negative 27. Therefore, X must be less than negative three. If it is going to be more negative than negative 27. And so if X is less than negative three, X must be negative and it also definitely must be less than a zero. So this is sufficient. It is sufficient to say no, because the question is asking is X greater than zero? If we were to diagram this on a number line, our answer here, it would look something like this. So zero is here and negative three is here. X could be anything that is less than negative three. So you would have an arrow going like this it is a one-sided solution. Now, statement two says x squared is greater than nine. And so the properties of even exponents is uh, they are always positive or zero, and they're only zero when the base is equal to zero. So if x squared must be greater than nine, well, here we have two options for what x can be. So for example, if x is equal to three, then x squared is equal to nine. And so one option is x can be greater than three. But when our base here is negative, it's always going to be turned positive because we have an even exponent here. And so we can say the same thing when X is equal to negative three, X squared will be also equal to nine. And so in this case, if we want X squared to be greater than nine, X must be less than negative three. So these are two possibilities. So X can be greater than three or X can be less than negative three. So for example, when X is equal to negative four, negative four squared is equal to 16, which is greater than nine. So if we were to diagram this on a number line, it would look something like this. You have zero here, three here, negative three here. Here we would have a two-sided solution. So in this case, you can't forget to answer our question. Our question is, is X greater than zero? Well, we have values for X that could be greater than zero and ones that aren't greater than zero. So statement two is actually insufficient. And so A is our answer. Next, we have this very short looking problem solving question that just says two raised to the 24th is. And so it looks like we are going to have to test each of our answer choices, use our exponent rules to see if any of these things are equal to two to the 24th. So two to the fourth is two times two to the 12th. That's really saying two to the fourth is equal to two times two to the 12th. So two times two to the 12th is just two to the first times two to the 12th. So using our exponent rules, this would be two to the 13th. That is not two to the 24th. So this is out two times one to the 24th. Well, one raised to the anything is just going to be one. So two times one to the 24th is just the same as two times one, which is just two. Definitely not equal to two to the 24th. One more than two to the 23rd. So that would be two to the 23rd plus one here. Well, there's nothing really we can do with this. But whatever this is, it's going to be very, very, very close to, to the 2 to the 23rd, not 2 to the 24th. So this is out. Now, if you wrote it like this, so this is 2 raised to the 23rd, and that plus 1. You would say 2 to the 23rd plus 1, so 23 plus 1 in the power, that would be 2 to the 24th, but that is not what this is saying. Half of 2 to the 48th. So this, I'll do this down here. So 2 to the 48th divided by 2. 
this is just 2 to the first. So when we are dividing exponents with the same base, we subtract the powers. So 2 to the 48th, 2 to the 48th minus 1 is just 2 to the 47, not 2 to the 24th. So e is our only answer choice left. Let's confirm that this is, in fact, equal to 2 to the 24th. So 2 times 2 to the 23rd. So that's just 2 to the 1st times 2 to the 23rd. We are multiplying exponents with the same base. Add the powers 2 to the 24th. E is the answer. Now here, we have a question that, if you were seeing it for the first time, might look a bit intimidating. After you know your exponent rules, this should be easy, though. And so I am just looking to use my exponent rules to combine and cancel as much as I can here in order to get a much simpler result like I have in my answer choices. So we have 2 to the 7th plus 2 to the 7th times the quantity 4 squared all raised to the, to the 3rd over 2 to the 10th times 4 raised to the negative 2nd. One thing to note here is I have two different types of terms in this fraction. I got these base 2 exponents, and then I have these base 4 exponents. The one thing you might note is that, well, the, this base 4 is really just a bunch of 2s, because 4 is equal to 2 squares. And so I have a bunch of 2s buried in here. And so if I want to get everything in terms of the same base, I could probably convert this whole thing into just a bunch of 2s, which is how I'm going to end up with something like my answer choices. And this is why if you are looking to combine or cancel things out, especially when you have exponents, if you break the bases up into their prime factors, you should be able to combine or cancel out. You should be able to see everything that can be combined or canceled out very easily. And so in this case, so if we start with, you know, we have 2 to the 7th plus 2 to the 7th. So we cannot really use any of our exponent rules here because here we are adding exponents with the same base. There really is no rule for this. But one thing we can do is if you just think of this as, this is just x plus x, which should be equal to 2x. Except in this case, uh, x happens to be equal to 2 to the 7th. So this is just sort of normal algebraic reasoning. So this should just be equal to 2 times 2 to the 7th, which is 2 to the 8th. So we got 2 to the 8th times, so 4 squared, we are raising an exponent to an exponent, so we multiply the powers, so 4 squared raised to the 3rd should just be 4 to the 6th, all over 2 to the 10th, times 4 raised to the negative 2. So now, we can start using our exponent rules. So we got 2 to the 8th over 2 to the 10th here. And so we are dividing exponents with the same base. So we subtract the powers. So that is just 2 to the negative 2 left up top. Now here we have 4 to the 6th over 4 to the negative 2. And so we got to do 6 minus negative 2. So in this case, it's really 6 plus 2. And we are left with 4 to the 8th up top. So now we can do what I was alluding to before, it looks like we're sort of one step away here. We got to find a way to combine my twos and my fours into a single base. And we're going to convert our four into a bunch of twos because four is really just equal to two squared. So four to the eighth, that's really the same as saying two squared to the eighth, which is multiply the powers two to the sixteenth. So this is just now we are just multiplying exponents with the same base add the powers 2 to the 14th which is e and so these are gmat questions testing our fundamental knowledge of exponents now we will do some medium and hard level questions